The Bible speaks in many places about the importance of faith and or believing. My next guest has a viewpoint. There's a direct connection to a person's ability to be healed and between their, that and their faith. And Terry Dismore is a businessman. He's been involved in radio. And a lot of this revelation in your own life started on your honeymoon. Yeah. Now, this is a family show, but tell me how that, <laughs> tell me how that happened. I'll do my best. Yeah. Well, I got married in 1985, mm -hmm. uh, July of 1985. So we're coming up on 33 years. And uh, before we got married, uh, we got engaged in February. And by April, my mom had been making my wife's wedding dress and she'd been losing quite a bit of weight. And she didn't need to lose quite a bit of weight. So we thought, well, I wonder what's going on. We had our blood tests as you used to have to do. We got married yeah. in Indiana and had to have a blood test. Thankfully, I passed. And uh, then uh, they said, well, something's wrong with the blood test. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any idea what that could be. So we went on to uh, get married, went on our honeymoon. We got to Gatlinburg. And on Tuesday morning, we got married on Saturday. On Tuesday morning, I woke up and my wife was laying there wide awake looking at me. And I thought, well, you know, we're newlyweds. Yeah. She wants to have a good look at this face, yeah, right. you know. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I've been awake all night. I'm very sick. Uh, and it hadn't woke you up. Hadn't, it didn't wake me yeah. up. And... Um, uh, so called the doctor and he said, give her this pill and this pill. We'd brought some medicines mm -hmm. with her because the doc had said, eh, it's probably bridal nerves. So <clears throat> not knowing that that's an official diagnosis. I was going to say, I've never heard of that one. No, it's, it, I, I'm thinking not. But anyway, he said, uh, give her this and this and come home and don't go to the, ho the house, go to the hospital. So I gave her that and she went to sleep and slept all the way from Gatlinburg to New Albany, Indiana, oh, where we lived, yeah. and uh, didn't know we were at the hospital when we got there. And um, the next day, she woke up and she said, where am, where am I? And I said, you're in the hospital in New Albany. Did you know yet what was wrong? No, had no idea. They did some tests, and uh, the doc said, well, something's wrong with her kidneys. Okay, I mean, I just, just got this brand new bride. Yeah. And I'm hoping the warranty's still <laughs> the good, you know? And so... I mean, we joke about it all the time now because it was such a traumatic then, thing for yeah. a newlywed couple to go through. Sure. We signed wills on the fourth day of marriage, and they said she might not make it. Uh, oh, she had yeah. a what's called a necrotic kidney, which means it was it dead. It was dying. Or it yeah, was already it, dead. It was gone. It was still there, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're not sure if we can save the other one. Okay, so <clears throat> she had surgery, had that kidney removed. The other one worked fine. As a matter of fact, most people don't know this, but there are a lot of people out there that have one kidney. Mm -hmm. They just don't know it. And she's functioned fine on it, uh, fine on it now for 33 years. But in that, we began to pray for healing. We were going to uh, an Assembly of God church at the time, and we believed in, in uh, healing and mm -hmm. how people should be. And, um, uh, but she didn't get well. And we wound up moving to Columbus for me to run a radio station up here, and, uh, or up there, mm -hmm. I should say. And um, in that time, she got sicker and sicker, uh, had 13 or 14 major surgeries. I was told probably 11 times in that period of time that we were married that she wasn't going to make it through the night. This or is all the tied to the, to the kidney? All tied to the illness that she had, which was called anti-cardiolipin antibody syndrome. Well sounds like something yeah. wrong with your heart, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It has something to do. It's a, it's a disease similar to lupus in that your body attacks itself. Mm -hmm. it's a so it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And uh, we uh, continued to pray and believe for healing. Did you sit down at that time with her and say, this is our battle plan. This is how we're going to fight this thing. We've got doctors. They're doing their best, but this is, this is our battle plan. No. Uh, just to be honest, just, no, we didn't just, know just, what to do. Just, but you naturally knew to pray. Well, we did know to pray. I mean, she had mm -hmm. been saved. We'd both been saved about the same time when we were 13 years yeah. old. Had you ever seen healing before? From, I mean, as the result of prayer? No. Where somebody specifically prayed for somebody to be healed. And you, so you were, you were going on pretty thin faith. Well, I was. I was going on, I mean, I've heard testimonies, but mm -hmm. you ask, have I seen it? Yeah. And I hadn't seen it before. I had heard of it, but mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it. And so um, my wife grew up in a family of 16 people. There were 16 kids they were, and mom and dad. So there were 18 people wow. in the house. And she had come from a pretty bad situation. Mm -hmm. Dad was a binge alcoholic. And uh, mom was mean 
and Nay was kind of the center of the family, so she was the one that took care of everybody. Mm -hmm. That's my wife's name, Renee. We call her Nay. Her friends call her Nay. I have to call her Mrs. Dismore. <laughs> but it's uh, Good we've for her. been we've been like, what's going on here? Sure. So I was working at uh, Channel Twenty One in in uh, Columbus mm -hmm. at the time. And my boss one day said, let's go out and pray for your wife. So she was in the hospital. Things just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And we, I was really at the end of the rope. I had been, sure. I had been out um, uh, one night to see her in the hospital. I'm driving home. I call a good friend of mine. And I'm beating on the steering wheel, angry at God, because mm -hmm. why won't you heal her? Right. God can take that. Well, yeah, yeah, he's big God. Yeah. I always, people say, well, how can you question God? I'm like, D have you seen the size of the book of answers that <laughs> yeah. he's given us? You know, he, sure. we, he's given us a huge book of answers. Right. Why don't we ask him more questions? Mm -hmm. So um, my boss and I go to the hospital and pray for my wife. And this is in 2001. So we got married in 85. We've gone this long that she's, she's been, been sick. sick that whole time. Uh, yes, and she would be sick for a while and well for a while. But it was never. But you oh, never man, felt like great. we're over the hump. You never no. felt like that. Mm -hmm. And wow. she got down to. Uh, Nay's a normal sized woman. She got down to 65 pounds one time. That's how sick she was. She looked like. I've seen video of her at her depth of her illness, mm -hmm. and she just looked like a skeleton. I never saw her that though, that way though. You know how God gives yeah. you eyes for mm -hmm. your bride. Yeah. And that's how I I felt. But now you see her, you think. That, you're amazed that that's, that's, that's her. Yeah. I see pictures like that. So anyway, we go out and pray. And in the middle of the prayer, Nay is worshiping and weeping. She'd been in pain when we walked in. And she's worshiping and weeping. And my boss goes, and Lord, we pray that you would um, remove the sins of the father from the daughter and move on. He moved on or something like that. I think it might have been something more yeah. like, Lord, the, the sins of the, the father have come home to the daughter. That's what he said. Really? I'm like, well, that's odd. And I know it's scriptural that, you know, sin stays with families okay. through generations. And um, we're like, what's going on? And she agreed with that and was weeping and didn't feel bad. And then as soon as he left, she went right back to needing pain medicine again. Well, she'd been blamed. I found this out about doctors. Doctors and nurses are great. I love mm -hmm. doctors, you know. You've seen a lot of them. I've seen a lot of them. But I also know that they're human. Mm -hmm. And so when you're young, you think, well, doctors and nurses know everything. But, but they're they not died. God. They're yeah. not God. And a lot of doctors, when they have a female that doesn't know what's, they can't figure out what's wrong with her, blame it on her mind. It's all in your head. I've seen that I don't know how many times. And I've had nurses agree with me on that. And doctors agree really? with me on that. So um, they blamed her for that. So we went, uh, went home eventually, and one day in prayer, I heard the Lord say to me, either I can fix her or you can keep trying. So did you think at that point in time that your prayers, your prayer of faith was more like a works thing rather than just relying on God's grace and his ability to heal? Well, why would God I, say that? To I you? guess. Uh -huh. Well, because I don't know how you are, and you've been married, what did you say, 50 years? 50 years. Okay, so have you ever God's gotten... God's my wife <laughs> with patience. Well, yeah, we, we both have wives that are like, oh, you're, you're going to get an extra crown. You know? That's right, they will. I didn't think it was a works thing, and I didn't think it was based on what I did, but I did think, and I do think now, we can get in the way of what God wants to mm -hmm. do, what he's already said that he's going to do. I think we can get did in you, the way. Did you get a vision of that, how you, how you might be standing in the way? Mm -hmm. for yeah, I understood it. I understood fairly quickly mm -hmm. what he meant. Because I was praying a day or so later, I'm like, okay, what do I do? What am I doing mm -hmm. to stand in your way? And he said, tonight, when your wife gets sick, don't take her to the hospital. She'll beg you to take her to the hospital. Don't do it. It was the longest night of my life. Longest night of my life because she was begging me to take her to the from hospital. The pain or from pain? Pain and just, she couldn't get around. She would crawl from the bed to the, oh, to the, Terry. To the and I mean, God, what are you doing? Yeah. I've got to take care of her. And he's like, either you can fix her or I can. That's trust. Well, I didn't, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I think you had no, I don't no know place much, else to go. I, yeah, I don't know how much trust I had. It was just, that's, you know, when they say you get to the end of the rope, what do you do? Mm -hmm. So the next morning, about 5.30, I heard her on the phone in the other room. You know, they used to have phones attached you, to the wall. That you and, dialed. Oh, it's yeah. crazy. New technology. And, yeah, I tell you. And she's calling her doctor. 
And I hear her saying, well, my husband doesn't want to bring me, but I want to come. And so I'm like, okay, Lord, what do I do? And he goes, well, now, this is her. This isn't you. Oh, okay. But I want you to tell her three things. We're going to go to the hospital. They're not going to treat you well. They're going to not find anything wrong with you. They're going to give you a shot and send you home. So blood tests and things like that weren't showing anything at that time? Well, she would have blood tests and they would look weird, but they didn't know what was wrong with her. So they, you know, like, well, there's nothing. So I told her this, I, I, I'm going to take you. And I'm, Nay and I get along so well. We joke around. She's outgoing. We're both, we're not opposites by any stretch of the imagination. And I felt bad telling her that, but I told her. So that afternoon, we went, we got out of the emergency room where they had not found anything wrong with her. Told her they couldn't find anything. They didn't treat her well. They gave her a okay. shot, and we went home. Went by the chiropractor mm -hmm. first, actually, because he was able to help her son. And I reminded her of that. And she said, I don't know. And that began a period of about three or four nights where we had some of the deepest spiritual conversations that we had had in our entire marriage. Between the two of you. Between just me and her sitting at dinner. And on Thursday night, uh, she wasn't feeling well, so she went into the bathroom and I was sitting outside. And I braced myself for this question because I knew it was time to ask this question. I said, or to make a statement. And I didn't want to make this statement. But I said, nay, I think we need to talk about addiction. But I don't think you're addicted to medicine. I think you're addicted to relief. You want relief, and we cannot find it outside of God. And she said, I think you're right. That was on Thursday night before she, she was healed. She was addicted healed. to relief. Explain that to me a little bit. That she, she wanted it, but it wasn't there for her. Right. So we were addicted to finding it, I guess ah, is the best way to put okay. it. And, and we were looking at doctors. We, mm -hmm. we had a good searching, chiropractor, yeah. but it was like God was going, had that I become can fix a, this. Had that become the lifestyle? Yeah. Searching constantly for, for relief for her. Yeah. And we would... Mm -hmm. One of those... Remember I said we had some very good spiritual conversations the mm -hmm. whole time that yeah. week. One night before that, I had asked her, I said... And this, I know, was prompted by the Holy Spirit. These are questions that we, I, we just don't sit around and talk about mm -hmm. these things. And I said, ah, I want you to tell me, when your dad would get sober, because I knew he would be drunk for six months and then oh. sober for a year. Mm -hmm. And I said, when your dad would get sober, what was the first thing that he did? And she said, well, he'd go in the kitchen and cook. And I mean, if my jaw could have fallen off my face, it would have because when Nay got well, the first thing she did would go in the kitchen and bake and make stuff for people. And it reminded me of what my boss had said at the bedside that day. The sins of the father have come home to the daughter. And that led to the addictive question. So on Friday, she didn't feel much better, but there was a peace about her. On Saturday morning, she woke me up. She said, uh, I'm going to throw all my medicines out. And she was on 13 different medicines at the time. Now, I know a lot of people right. watching this are probably on 10 or 12. And I've mm -hmm. had doctors say, you know, you get on more than two or three and you've got side effects working against side That's effects. That's right. They're, they're, every medication is going to have a side effect with something True. else eventually. And so she, um, we went, I said, can I help you? And she said, all you can do is help me carry them to the bathroom. And we poured $150 worth, that's the deductible amount, <laughs> down the toilet and flushed it. Can't do that today, by the way. But well, it's probably illegal then. <laughs> it is. But hey, we lived in Patasco at the there, time. What are they going to do? There you do? go. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I may be, they may be waiting out there for me now. <laughs> the fish are all sick. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, that was Saturday. I went upstairs and looked on the internet to find out what the side effects were of going off some of these, and it was not good. Going on, especially cold turkey, yeah, not, just, not being weaned off of some of this. Yeah, that's exactly right. And she was. I, was, I, I have to say there was some fear involved. Now, here's mm -hmm. what I want to say to you. In all this, my faith is not like, oh, yeah. It's not like that. It is, God, I trust you, and I believe you're speaking to me, and I believe you're speaking mm -hmm. to her. And I believe what your word says, that by your stripes we have been healed. It's a past tense, mm -hmm. not a future or even mm -hmm. current tense. So, okay, that was on Saturday, Sunday. I, went, she, I said, how do you feel? She said, I don't feel any better, but I know I'm healed. So she's, okay. 
She's proclaiming it. That, yeah, that by this time it's coming out this way. Had she way. ever spoken that before? We had, but it was in hope, not in belief. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the two. And we had been through these, remember, we'd been through three or four nights of just great spiritual talk mm -hmm. between the two of us. So it wasn't just eating yeah. or taters, it right. was, we were in, in depth. Mm -hmm. So uh, Monday morning, I'm at my desk and I call my wife, see how she was every morning. I had left her set up in bed that morning to get to, so she could get to the bathroom if she needed to. Mm -hmm. She could get out of bed, crawl to the bathroom. It was not good. And not the nurse good. was coming that day to bring her her walker. And it wasn't good. How old was she at the time? Uh, let's see, it was 2001, so she was 41. I was 40. Wow. And, uh, Young for yeah. to be in that devastating oh, yeah. condition. Yeah. And we see, people, we see people today that are like that, that are just like, okay, I'm going to accept this. I'm going to take this. This is my disease. This is what belongs to me, my cancer, my heart attack, mm -hmm. my heart problems. And it's like, quit claiming them. Quit saying to the... Taking possession. Yeah. yeah, it's like, oh, these are mine. Well, what are you going to do with them? Now, if it's your Corvette, okay, I'm all right <laughs> with that. But if it's your, you know. Um, so I said, uh, I call the house and she's out of breath, which was like, oh no, what happened? Yeah. And she's like that. And I said, oh, what's the matter, honey? She said, Terry, I'm healed. And I'm like, oh, I know that you're going to be. And she said, no, no, I'm healed. And I said, Baby, I'm believing with you that you're going to be healed. And she said, listen to me. I've been running up and down the steps for the last 20 minutes. Wow. I said, God. what happened? And she said, I, I felt the Lord say, get to the couch. Now, we lived in a house that had the master on the first floor. Mm -hmm. So she crawled out to the couch. She could not walk to the couch. She crawled out there and she started praying. And she praised and worshiped God because she knew by his word she had been healed. She knew that it was coming. We didn't know when, but she said, I felt like a deluge hit me on the top of my head. And when it came out the bottom of my feet, I was on them. And she said, I was clean of that disease. And I know I am. And I know I was running around the house. And I got home pretty quickly. I would imagine. And we started calling people. Interestingly, now we go to a different church now, but we called mm -hmm. our pastor and he came over and he didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. He could see it and couldn't believe he still it. Still didn't believe it. Yeah. But you got into praying in this deep spiritual conversation. Was, is there any ritual that you would have done differently than somebody else who hasn't been healed? I mean, some kind of special prayer, special there's no kind of formula fasting, to it, Bob. Is, is, there's no formula ritual. But well, no. But now when I think of formula or ritual, I think something I'm gonna write down and these are the things yeah, that I'm gonna do. These are the steps I gotta take. Here's what I tell people now. I don't this will shock you. And she's still healed today. Yeah. I mean, she was and she is and she, she is. Yes. Now I will tell you this that we've had illnesses that other people have, mm -hmm. but she's not sick. She as a matter of fact had two stents put in four years ago. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, didn't you believe for healing for her heart? People are smart, Alex, Bob. Yeah, they I'm they tell can you. be. And I said, well, we believe that medical healing is good too. There's Absolutely. nothing wrong with that. God's given us a great gift with, with, with doctors. It's not a second class yeah. healing. You may want the testimony of, well, I was walking around and, you mm -hmm. know, like I know a lady who lost 13 pounds overnight one night. She had a tumor in her body and it the woke up the next morning and it was G-O-N-E gone. gone. Wow. Well, yeah. uh, everybody's skeptical about mm -hmm. that. Okay, you can be skeptical, but she's got the but proof of it there. It's tough to, when somebody, uh, when they live the testimony, yeah. it's tough to refute it in their life because they're not going to believe it because they know it's right. true. Yeah. So here's the, you ask about a ritual. Mm -hmm. And I will say that there's not, but I do when, this is what I started to say a minute ago, I'll shock you with this. I don't pray for everybody that asks me to pray for their healing. And I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. If you note in the Bible, in the New Testament, when Jesus is going around healing people, there are a few times that he can't. Because of their unbelief? Because of their unbelief. And almost every time he does heal somebody, he says something to the effect, your faith has made you well. So we look at, well, Jesus can do anything. He couldn't, he couldn't always. And Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. He's fully God and fully man. And yet, 
the truth is, we get in his way. We get in his way, and we have to get. And I honestly think it's a renewing of the mind. Ever heard that phrase before? Mm -hmm. You have to have your mind renewed, and that's what I think happened. Yeah, I pray for that on a regular basis. Well, and when I, when I arm myself in the helmet of the, the helmet of salvation is the the mind of Christ, and, and yeah. renew that mind. And so, what do you get when you renew them with the mind of mm -hmm. Christ? You get the thoughts. Of, that the Holy Spirit brings to you instead of the thoughts that the enemy brings yeah. to you. He's an accuser. He's like, hey, ain't going to work. Yep. He's an accuser of the brother. He's a roaring lion seeking who, who he can devour. Yeah. Isn't so it crazy, we, though? We'll yeah. listen to him, though, and we won't listen to God say, well, it's easier. He's it, louder sometimes. Because, yeah, and it's, it's the humanity in us sometimes. We're not God. And, yeah. And so we do have a tendency to listen to the negative and believe the negative because it's easier. We see it played out in everybody's life. In well, and we live on a fallen world where mm -hmm. those things are going to play out in, yeah. in real time sometimes. Right. So. so the illness. Yeah. I mean, did, did God bring that into your life to, to teach you a lesson, to teach your wife a lesson? Does God bring those things into people's lives? Well, I think the Bible says that in all things, God will work them out for our good, right? Mm -hmm. Not all things are for us to work them out for our good, that He brought them. And when I talk to people about that, they're like, well, but I see these things happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I, I see that. Do you change doctrine because of what you observe? And if you do, then your doctrine is pretty, doc well, pretty weak. You weren't work yeah, you weren't right. walking it. Well, and so um, I don't believe God does those things. The, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift is from the mm -hmm. Father above. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll get this question, if you don't mind me. I'm not skipping ahead no, here, but no. what about Job? Well, what about Job? Because, yeah. you know, we sing the song, He gives and takes away. Mm -hmm. Well, what chapter of Job is that in? Yeah, it's not in Job. Well, it actually is. Yeah. He is. It, it, Job says it in the second chapter. But there's 31 chapters in Job. Mm -hmm. Or maybe 30, I don't know. There's more than two. But we take that phrase that a man that's miserable says... God gives and... And takes, takes away. away. And it's like, okay, is that what you saw the rest of your life, Job? And the answer is no. Because God restored to him what restored. the enemy took yeah, away. Took away. So are, there, there can be good things in our life that you, you think God takes some of those away if they're, if they're keeping us from Him or keeping us from learning a, a principle about Him? I, I really think what He does is changes the desires of our heart. You know, in Psalm 37, mm -hmm. it says that um, if we delight ourselves in Him, He will give us the desires of our heart. Now, there's two ways to interpret that. And I've looked even, and I don't read Hebrew or Greek, or yeah. I can barely read English, yeah. but... That's not true. But uh, I believe that He can change our hearts, renew our minds mm -hmm. to what, what's right and what's wrong, and give us a desire that, take away a desire that we have. Uh, I'm, Even if it's not a desire, what if it's a, a physical thing? I mean, it's like playing golf or something. Yeah. And it's keep, for some reason, it's keeping us from a, de a family development, or it's, it's keeping us from learning more about Him in some way, and He just takes that desire away? Or? I think He does after yeah. a while. It, mm -hmm. it becomes less enjoyable. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm trying not to go, you know, oh, all these scriptures, but the truth is mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, when he begins to remove a desire for something, we don't have joy in it anymore. So we lose strength to endure to it. Endure it's it. like, I, for instance, I got my physique, and I know it's, you know, I'm a big boy. Godlike. Well. Gre Grecian statue. Grecian, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stand up at this point. <laughs> No, but, neither but, do I. <laughs> I'll, I'll but, sit up taller. Yeah. yeah, but I got it from eating M and M's, uh, and I eat a lot of M and M's. I got to the point where I could squeeze an M and M in this finger this far away and get it to my mouth. You, can you actually were a champ. I was a champion <laughs> M and M eater. I probably have a medal. Well, instead of a medal, I got a statue. There you you know, I, and so, it, it, and it got to the point where now do I still like those? Yeah, but I don't have any desire to sit and eat mm -hmm. a pound of those a night. Like I used to eat a half a pound a night. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. I, that desire got taken away. Now, is and they're that, not necessarily a bad thing. They were. They M&Ms are yeah, good. Yeah. Have you ever had one? Oh, I mean, yeah. they're delicious. With peanuts, even. Well, yeah. they, you know, those are an abomination to the Lord. But <laughs> you know, no, they're not. But it's, 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 so much of those desires change. Yeah. And you know, over a period of you've been married fifty years. I've been married thirty-three. Mm -hmm. There are still desires that we had that we had on our honeymoon, and mm -hmm. there are desires that aren't as strong as we had mm -hmm. back then. And I'm not talking about physical. I'm just yeah. talking about things we like to mm -hmm. do. 
I mean, I'm like you. I don't. Do you, you've mentioned golf twice. Do we need to talk? Well, you probably should. Yeah. Okay. I haven't played yet this year, but that's okay. Me neither. And I love playing it, but it's. And my wife is like, why don't you go play some golf? Well, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't have that desire right now. And it's not that I'm terrible. It's not that also that I'm terrible. Mm -hmm. It is, I just don't have a desire to do that. I would rather spend time doing other, other things. things. Mm -hmm. And I think those are desires that God builds into our lives. But I don't believe that God causes bad things to happen to us so we'll learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. It teaches something. Now, I mean, yeah, and people say, well, don't you think he does? I'm like, why do you think that? Well, where usually, does it say that? Yeah. where does it say that in Scripture? And for that matter, there is an, an analogy in Scripture. It talks about if you're... If your child asks you for a fish, are you going to give him a stone? Right, yeah. Well, did, did you all have any kids? Oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how mm -hmm. often did you take your son, do you have a son, mm -hmm. out to the backyard and just break his leg to show him? Yeah, just to show him how much yeah, I love him. Yeah, I love you Teach and I want to show well, you I want to keep, keep him from climbing trees. Yeah, so now he's not going to do that anymore. No, you give him a desire not to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes the, our desire changes when we're younger because... Uh, we, uh, back in my day and your day, yeah. we had the application of some corporal punishment, and that changed our desire. But I don't think God does that, but, no. you know, he changes yeah. us. People are saying, okay, there's, there's no ritual, there's no plan, there's no, there's no patented way to do this other than seek God's will. What, what would you tell somebody right now that's, that's in the middle of that same battle you may have been in? One, praying for your wife, and two, how she can pray, how, how, they, how you can reach out and grab a hold in, in, in that case. Well, the, there, I say there's no ritual to it, and there's, and there's not. But there is a plan in God's Word mm -hmm. on how to do that. First of all, you have to have yourself transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the first thing that you have to get your mind to understand is that God is good, and He always mm -hmm. is. And there is no bad thing that comes from Him. What happens to people is they can't explain bad things that happen unless they give the attribution to God. Well, they want to blame someone. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always do. We can't blame ourselves, and maybe we don't even believe in the devil, and we don't believe we've got an enemy, a spiritual enemy, so it must have been, a, must have been God. God. Well, Fate. you know, and in, the, in the insurance business, they say act of God. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, a we live in a fallen earth. world. That's, and we, that's we have key, to under, yeah. Well, don't we have to understand that there's an enemy? Yes. If you don't, if you accept that God is always good, you have to accept that there's an enemy to cause there's it. An, there's an evil side. There's, there's, a, there's an evil doer. Right. And it has been since the, the world fell. Right. Yeah. So how do they approach that then? So here's what I tell people when they start talking about wanting to get healed. Mind. Is first of all, what do you believe about healing? Mm -hmm. And if they say to me, well, I believe God can. I say, well, there's your problem. Uh, so I've got a friend of mine mm -hmm. that... Uh, called me one day and he had a back problem of one kind and I said, well, what do you believe about healing, Dan? He goes, I believe God can. I said, well, that's a, that's a problem. You believe God will. I believe God has. Yes. There's On a the difference cross, between yes. will and can and has. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and I will tell you that there are a lot of people that won't follow it past that step because they believe God's will be done. Have you ever heard that in sure. a prayer anywhere? Mm -hmm. Lord, your will be done. Yeah. Well, what is God's will? He gives us a, a whole Bible full of His will. Now, some churches, some denominations teach that God's will is a pinpoint. And you better hit it. And, you, and if you miss it, you're hamatia, you're sinning. <clears throat> okay, well, what's the pinpoint? So when you got up this morning, or let me, let me put it on myself. When I got up this morning, did I choose to wear a brown shirt with a tan jacket? Is that what I'm going on? Yeah, yeah okay. It. All right. You hit it. I, I hit that mark, but I decided it. Did I decide, did I ask God before I put those on? Nah, it's just mm -hmm. clothes. Did I ask him which foot to put out first? Nah, I'm just getting out of bed. Well, those are important decisions, though. What if we step on a Lego on the floor, <laughs> you know? Now, at our house, we don't have any kids, so if I step on a Lego, <laughs> we're in trouble. You're in trouble. Uh, so you, you got that part going. And then... Um, where is the demarcation between making a decision with God and making mm -hmm. one without Him? Well, it has to be a renewing of your mind because there comes a point where you have to decide, who am I going to marry? Well, who you're going to marry and what socks are you going to wear are both decisions. Mm -hmm. One seems to have more weight to it, so God's going to be more interested in it, but not really because I don't want to limit God to what the weight of the decision is. 
I want him to be present at all yeah, times awesome. and in all things. So, and I know that's kind of a weird way of putting it. I did read a good book by, I think it was by Leighton Ford one time. It was his doctoral thesis, and it was as dry as my throat feels right now. <laughs> but it was, his doctoral thesis was the will of God is outlined in the Bible. And it's a framework, not a pinpoint. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not in Africa, so I don't know what the will of God is for someone that lives in Nairobi. I don't but I know what the will of God is for the world. So how do I operate inside that framework? And where did the decision stop being made by God and start so being made, made by, by us? Him. Well, they really all are made by us. We can just be guided. I think God mm -hmm. sends us nudges. I think God well, is he like- did you. Yeah, I mean, he would, I, I believe he came directly to me. Mm -hmm. I believe not, more often now, I hear him more often now than I did then. I heard him mm -hmm. when he said, marry that woman. Mm -hmm was we weren't together at the time, but he said, marry her. We'd broken up, mm -hmm. and we did, and I did, and I couldn't be. But when he asked you, who, did, did you want to do this, or are you going to let him do it, you started really paying attention at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. It was, a, it, it was a choice, and I believe God leads right. us in our choices. I really do Absolutely. believe that. And that there's framework inside the Bible mm -hmm. to say that. So, Thank you, you so much. Thank really you, appreciate Bob. it. What a great story. And, but the thing is, it's, it's a fact. It's a fact in your, li your wife's life. Yeah. And it's a fact that you guys can, can, can say, this, is, this has happened to us. God, God had healed her. Yeah. And, and I, believe he, I believe he wants to work that in everyone's mm -hmm. life. But I believe we stop him from time to time.